unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 8. Now the Bible says, let's read. For bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable and to all things having the promise of the life that is now is and the life which is to come. Praise God. For bodily exercise profiteth little. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you go in the verses before, Paul tells the things to Timothy that he must avoid, that he must stay away from. He says, refuse profane and old wives' fables. And he told him, exercise thyself rather and do godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Somebody say amen. Paul tells Timothy, exercise yourself unto godliness. He tells him, exercise yourself unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth what? Little. Bodily exercise profiteth little, the Bible says. But godliness, the Bible says, is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the zoe that now is and that which is to come. The life of God that now is and the life of God which is to come. He tells him, exercise yourself to godliness. That means a man can exercise himself to godliness. Hallelujah. God tells you that bodily exercise, it's a little profit. He's not saying that it's wrong to exercise. I would rather that every Christian does some exercise of sort. Praise God. Some of you do running. Some of you ride bikes. Some of you walk. It is profitable. But what? A little. Praise God. Give me the message of that. He says in the message, walks out in the gymnasium are useful. Praise God. They are useful. But a disciplined life of God is far more so. Making you both fit what? Today and what? And forever. Hallelujah. So, bodily exercise is okay. To exercise your body is okay. But it has a little profit. It can keep you away from certain things. Hallelujah. But he has said, but exercising yourself to godliness. Exercising yourself to godliness. Godliness, the exercise. He says it's profitable for the life now. The promise of the life that now is. The guarantee. It is the guarantee. The divine guarantee of the life that now is and the life that is to come. It means it's possible to have a good life now and the life to come. It's possible to be a success, a success in the life now and the life to come. It's possible to be happy in the life now and the life to come. It's possible to live a glorious life in the life now and the life to come. It's possible to, to live a divine, healthy life than the, now, in the life now and the life to come. It is possible to be a victor, to be triumphant in everything. It is possible for you to register results that are beyond normal in the life now and the life to come. It's possible to write history in the life now and the life to come. It's possible for you to be beyond average in the life now and the life to come. It's possible. But Paul tells you there is an exercise. And many people don't know how to exercise themselves and to godliness. 
They don't know how to exercise themselves. And tonight, by the grace of God, I want him to give me the grace to articulate to every heart the way it has to be understood. Because if you do, you go in your spiritual gym right away. You won't wait, hallelujah. You'll start doing your spiritual gym. You see, why Jesus Christ, through Paul, is giving us the allegory of the physical exercise and the spiritual exercise, he tends to mean that, like you see physically, there are people who are strong. Strong. They have muscles like me. They are big. You understand? There are also people who are so small and weak. You can even blow them with a feather. You understand? Like it is physically. Also it is what? Spiritually. There are spiritual lightweights. And there are spiritual heavyweights. Hallelujah. If you have watched boxing before, there is lightweight, right? Then, then there is featherweight. Then there is middleweight. Then there is heavyweight. And in all their classes, they have best. So you can be the best in feather. It doesn't mean that you can match a man of middle weight. Hallelujah. You can be the best in middle class. It does not mean that because you're the best boxer in middle class, it means that you can verse a heavyweight. No. A heavyweight will just punch you out. Are you hearing me? Because there comes a time where it doesn't matter how much skill you have, it cannot withstand the power of another individual. It ain't matter how articulate you are. It ain't matter how blessed you are. It ain't matter how advantaged you are. There is a force that a certain body cannot take. Even if it's misguided, the moment it touches a certain body, even if it's just a misguided punch, but the moment it touches a certain body, it can break you, even if it's misguided. So it is with the spirit. Some people are the best featherweight. Some are the best middleweight. Some are the best of the heavyweight. You can find a man who is the least in the heavyweight. He's still greater than the best in the featherweight. Did you understand what I'm saying? The spirit world is ranked. Tell your neighbor the spirit world is ranked. That is why the Bible says every man matched in each of their course and none breaking their ranks. When you understand the ranking of the spirit, you will know who you need and who needs you and who you don't need. Praise God. You'll know who you need, who needs you and who you don't need. You learn how to attract and how to repel what you don't need. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You can never understand true honor until you understand the rankings of the spirit. If you don't understand the ranks of the spirit, you will never understand what true honor is. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Custom to whom custom is what? Do. And fear to whom fear is due. And tribute to whom tribute is due. Do you know why it tells you to give honor to whom honor is due? One of the most underlying principles of attracting what you admire is to give honor to who you see has it more than you do. There's a certain respect you must accord to those that are bigger than you are. Hallelujah. It does not matter whether you agree with them or you don't. Give honor to whom honor is due. That's a spiritual principle. You can never carry honor for what you don't carry the revelation of its distinction. You see, there's somebody who will listen to people and say, oh wow, these men of God are speaking. Yes. But you see, every man of God has his own distinction. And every distinctive mark on a man defines the level and place of honor to that man. Otherwise, any man of God can be treated common. Sometimes because familiarity breeds contempt. You can be common to a person because you are available to them. Or because they see you every day. Or because they are your friend. Or because you are his friend. Or your half friend. You understand what I am saying? They will never be true on until somebody sees in you the distinctive mark that makes you different from everybody else. 
that separates your voice from the noises that can say this person has something special on their life that not many people have. That's the beginning of honor. There are people who go to church and say, you know me, I'm going to church because all churches are the same. Not all churches are the same. Are you hearing me? Oh, you know, me, I listen to one, two, three, four, five preachers. Not all of them are the same because they all speak the same. Yes, they can all speak the same, but they're not ranked the same. The authority in the spirit is different. Did you understand what I just said? But some people treat uncommon as though it's common. And because of that indifference, many cannot even grow to the place God wants them to grow because they don't understand how to honor what's above them. I thank God that this was one of the most cardinal lessons the Lord taught me. I know those above me and I know how to honor them. If you're a man of God and they don't honor you, don't take offense. It only means the person who you're ministering to has not seen the distinction yet. He doesn't mean that you're you're a little man or you're small. No. It only means they've not seen it. Are you hearing me? And some of them, it's not that they've not seen it because you don't carry the distinction. But some of them probably they've not seen it because they hear what they don't listen to. Are you hearing me? They don't hear the inner voice of your forward expression. Of your ministration. Are you hearing me? Even to Paul. Are you hearing me? He tells us, look, I am sharing these things to you that you might know my knowledge in the mystery. Are you hearing me? But to the end, that the man will understand to follow after. Even as I imitate Christ. The imitations of the spirit are not emotional indulgences. Are you hearing me? The revelations. It gets a certain understanding. That is why when we're growing up, we met men who were anointed. We honored them and they spoke words in our lives and our lives changed. And I saw people who were around the same men of God and they've never changed even a minute. Why? Because we treated the anointing differently from the way they beheld it. Tell your neighbor, know how to deal with the anointing. Just know how to deal with the anointing. Your life will be easier. You realize that certain things in the inheritance of the pattern of the spirit are defined by certain voices in your life. That even if you go to prayer mountain, you're wasting time. Even if you fast for 40 days, you're wasting time. Your deliverance is with certain people and some are around you. But you'll never know why. Because for you say, me, I don't need any ma Oh, Bambi, okay. If Jesus needed Simeon to release him to the responsibility of the spirit, what about you? Not something. Say something. You understand what I'm saying? So, men of God, never take offense when your distinction is not seen. But mark those who see the distinction. Are you hearing me? Because if they don't see that distinction, they will worship you instead of honoring. You understand? Hallelujah. Now, there are three major verbs or words in the New Testament Greek language that all mean the same word exercise. Okay? So yes, you in your Bible, your English Bible, you're going to read exercise, but in the Greek language, there are three things or three words or three verbs that all mean the word exercise. And all of them are slight or in a way different from each other depending on what God is seeking to explain or articulate to the reader of the word. The first word is in Acts 24, verse 16. Praise God. It says, and herein do I exercise myself, he says, to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and man. The Greek word there for exercise is askeo. Askeho, right? Now, when he's talking about that kind of askeho, askeho, the exercise, that kind of exercise is a form of art. Follow me. It's a form of art to endure sort of labors, a sort of pains 
In fact, the literal word as keho is to take pains. To develop a form of art to take pains. Are you hearing me? To take pains. To develop a form of art that takes pains. Are you hearing me? Now, in this instance, Paul has conditioned his conscience to virtue and and understanding and care and thought and everything else in him to exercise his conscience, to remind his conscience, to listen to the inner voice of his conscience constantly, not to walk void of offense toward man and toward God. That's one level of exercise. And I think one of the most primal and basic experiences of the Christian life. Some people are not conscious when they offend. Are you hearing me? And you might think that it's easy, but until you see it with your eyes, it will be so hard to believe that certain people are not conscious. They don't take the pains of, 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 of an awakened conscience to make sure that they don't offend man and God. Somebody walks next to another individual. And then kicks them, poo, and then just walks back. You understand? Nothing said. Nothing done. And you're like, don't you think that after stepping this person, you should have told them sorry? Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Praise God. But you see, Askeho is deeply revealed in the understanding of marriage. The root word askeo actually comes from the word askeos. And the word askeos, that root word, specifies the contribution of a wife to the usefulness of the husband. And the only way sometimes as a wife to contribute the, your usefulness, you, let me explain this. There are women who are married to men, are you hearing me? And they think that your use to a man is the basic needs of life. I cook. Listen, even if he was not married to you, he would eat food. I wash clothes. Even if he was not married to you, he would own a washing machine. Are you hearing me? I gave him children. Beautiful. But even if he was not married to you, he would have children. There is nothing in the basic life of man that as a woman, no other woman would not give him. What makes you a helper meet is that you have a distinctive mark on your life that ministers him into usefulness. Proverbs 31 verses 23. The Bible doesn't say he's known. No, the Bible says her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Why does the Bible say her husband? Why her husband? Why not just the man? He is not known in the gates because he's a man. No, he's known in the gates because he's her husband. Praise God. And women, whether you want it or not, that will cause you to take pains. If you have been married for more than 20 years, you understand what I mean. There are certain things you will see and say, because I must make him useful, let me cover this. Because I must make him useful, let me not say this. Because I must make him useful, let me not go here. Because I must make him useful, let me not do this. Because I must make him useful, let me pray. Wait, because I must make him useful, let me read this word. Because I must make him useful, let me buy this book. Because I must make him useful, let me connect with this person. Because I must make him useful, let me go here. Let me because I must make him useful. It's not just an adage that behind every successful man is a woman. It's not just an adage. There's a reality to the understanding of this. That's the trained conscience. That's the trained conscience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It's more than just the basic necessities. If you're a woman and you have understood it, say amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's what I was trying to talk about when I said you condition yourself to virtue and thought. You remember the Proverbs, the virtuous woman who shall find? It is a conditioning. A woman of virtue is conditioned to be good. She will do her husband good all the days. She's not good because it's good. She, in fact, the Bible says she learns to adapt to him. It takes pains to adapt to somebody. If you're not ready, wait. Wait on the Lord. <laughs> do what? Wait on the Lord. But the Bible says that they must, wives must learn to adapt. Adapt. You cannot change who you have not adapted to. But that's scripture. You read your word, you will see. Are you hearing me? Now, the other definition, let me leave there. The other definition is poeo, right? Poeo, like P-O-I-E-O. -E In Revelation 13, verses 12, it means to do or to execute, right? He says, and he exercised all power of the first beast before him. That is to do, he executed all the power. The word there is poeo, right? But the one I wanted to talk about is the one in 1 Timothy 4, 8. Gumnazo. In the English, gymnasium. Are you hearing me? It means to train yourself, to exercise or train vigorously in any way. That means every person who has believed God, you must have a gym in your house. Did you understand what I just said? You must have a what? A gym in your what? Which house am I talking about? Your body, because that is the temple of the Lord. Yet your dwelling place. You dwell in your body. Every believer must have a spiritual gymnasium. And your spiritual gymnasium must be both equipped with enough equipment, praise God, and given enough time to exercise. And he's saying, if you do, this has the promise of the life that now is. The promise, it has the assurance of the life that you now live, that you live a good life. And the life that is to come, that even in heaven, you'll be in a better place. Woo, woo, woo. Did you understand what I just said? But people don't know how to exercise themselves. Now here he tells you, exercise yourself to godliness. Put a godly gym. In Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 11, he wants to talk to these people the things he believes they should understand. But he weighs them by the spirit and, and feels that they are not able to take certain things. Some things are so complicated for them to receive. And he speaks of this Christ and he says, He of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. So he was dealing with a generation of people who had dull ears. The inner ears were dull. And when your inner ear is dull and you're not trained to hear God, the challenge with that is your relationship with God will be greatly affected. And this is why, because you see, he cannot talk to you like he ought to. He can only talk to you like you should understand, not like he ought to. And you know, there are two kinds of Christians in the world. There's a Christian who God talks to like he ought to talk to him. What do I mean by that? I mean God talks to you according to the appointed timing of the spirit, the given line of divine purpose, the course that is aligned to the assignment and mandate on your life. And everything he speaks is in line and lieu of your lot and part in the bigger picture of the kingdom. That is a learned spirit. 
A land spirit has a trained ear. The Lord has given me the tongue of the land to know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. And the Bible says, and he wakens me morning by morning. He says, he wakens mine ear as he that is learned. That means my ear is learned. He has trained my ear is learned. It's a land ear. When he's talking to me, he's talking to me like a land person. You know, as he says, you see, I plan to do this in the world. He will look for people who when he makes one statement, they will understand. That doesn't mean that everybody in the world understands what's happening. That is how you understand the difference between the people that were thrown to the wolves and they were consumed and the men that were thrown to the same wolves and they came back leading the pack. The difference is simple. Some people understand the mind of God in the dispensation of that time. And their ministration is relevant beyond the gifting of God upon their lives. Did you understand what I just said? Because ministry and gifts are two different things. You can be gifted, but your ministry might be expired. And your brook is dried and you're ministering from borrowed waters. That even when people hear you, they understand, they don't carry the freshness of revelation as one who has experienced God face to face. Did you understand what I just said? But that when you speak, they can say, hmm, that, that, mm -mm, that wasn't from you. And now give honor to whom honor is due. You don't even quote the one who you're quoting. Give honor to whom honor is due. <laughs> Praise God. If it wasn't your coined idea, you, you say, one time a man so, so said so. Otherwise, even in the physical world, it's called what? Plagiarism. Isn't it? Yeah, you're plagiarizing another man's work. Now that is only to people without the covenant. Sons, your father's revelation is your inheritance. You don't need to say apostle grace says you can, it's okay. But even if you don't quote me, it's okay if you're a son. Because a son or a, or a daughter has, they have access to everything within the house. So, don't hear another person quote me who is submitted to this ministry and you say, e, you're borrowing. No, 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 no. Those are sons. It's entitled to them, whether it's Paul or Apollos, whether things present or things to come. Here he spoke about revelation. He says, all are yours and your Christ's. If you quote me, good. If you don't quote me, it is still okay. Go amuse your friends and tell them, you know, a revelation sat on me. It will be fine. You're my child. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not, and I won't be intimidated. And I won't say, oh, you stole my lines. No, no, no. The better. You know the joy of every father, like John says, I would that all my children get to the knowledge of what? Truth. He says, my desire is that all my children come to the knowledge of what? Of the truth. That's what John said. That's the true spirit of every father. Every minister. That your church members come to the knowledge of the truth and can have free access to everything you have in Christ. That's beautiful to look at. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, so they're, they're are saying that th there are people who, who are in tune that where God speaks from the level where he must speak because they carry understanding. And then there are also people who because they don't carry understanding, God has to go to their level and and speak to them the things they can understand. And lead them the way they can handle to go. And take them the place their spirits are able to connect to. The Bible says that when God set the children of Israel free. He led them not on the way of the Philistine. Even though it was shorter. Now the Bible didn't say that God was in his own sovereignty. You know choice not to take them through which was actually supposed to be a 12 journey no but the bible says he lists for adventure the bible says these people repent when they see war and they return to egypt he knew their level of understanding he knew that the spirit of fear on them the moment they see war they will return to egypt do you know that the the, the sea had to be parted the spirit of fear on them would find their way to Egypt, even though 
when Pharaoh was chasing them, they needed a miracle to separate the water. This time, whether water is separate or not, it's amazing what a man can do in fear. But here he said, they will find their way and return to Egypt. We don't know how, but they would. And amazingly, the man Moses here speaks as a third person, the children of Israel. That means he was not among them. Mm -mm, he wasn't with them. In fact, if Moses was alone, he would have taken a 12-day journey. Did you understand what I just said? Now, in this instance, 40 days, 38 years around the Mount Seir, and two more years moving to get to the same promise that they would have gotten to 12 days because of the spirit of fear. And God said, look, because of fear, this is going to take you 40 years. Let me get to your level and we move together 40 years. Cloud by day, fire by night, rock to give you water. Your clothes will not grow old, neither your feet get burned. I will keep all of you. None among them will be feeble. I'll present you healthy. I'll give you every promise that I've promised, but it will take you 40 years. Hey, Rafa from you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Do you know that some of you, the things you think are supposed to take years, if you had a certain understanding, these things would take seconds? Do you know your next miracle is just a millisecond of revelation away? Oh, somebody receive it. Do you know that your next breakthrough might not need 30 years? Did you know? that you don't need to compare yourself with the Peter or the Robert who took, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Or go through his house, house and people are narrating, you know, life is not easy for me. It took me 25 years. But you see, you're still young. You still have time. One time, many years ago, I looked at a car. Then it was the ML's. Mercedes. I said, oh my God. God, I desire an ML. Now, this guy... <laughs> This guy, this old guy, he's probably in his 60s. I think he's approaching his 60s. He said, oh, don't worry. You'll drive those cars. You know, you just give it time. Me, I drove my first email at the age of 40. So, you still have some time. <laughs> you know what I did? I listened and I kept quiet and I went back home. It stayed on my heart. I closed the door. Are you hearing me? put in the padlock, I stood in the center of my living room and I said Father in the name of Jesus Christ I cancel that word that was pronounced upon my life that I have to drive an email at the age of 40 far from me guess what, I had it in one year do you understand what I just said, tell your neighbor I was not called to move under your thermostat don't name me according to your sorrow She named him Benoni. Oh, he's the son of my sorrow. The father said, ah, he's Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Some people have labeled you according to their story. They think that because it took them 20 years, it has to take you 20 years. Because they struggled, if you have to struggle. Because things were hard, even you things like, I refuse in the name of Jesus Christ. I know the cost that the Bible has laid upon me. He said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And the power of God quickens me in everything God has spoken in my life. That is how it is. So what if it took her 20 years? So what if it took him 50 years? So what? No, you're not me. I said you're not me. Tell the devil. <laughs> you're in trouble. Tell him devil you're in trouble. Communicate, tell him. Yeah, tell him devil. You're in trouble. Big, big trouble. I'm about to do in minutes. What takes many years? Say it. I'm about to do seconds. What takes many centuries? I'm about to do in months. What takes many centuries? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Satisfy us while it's still early. The psalmist said it. If he didn't say it, I would understand. But he said it. That means it was in the desire of the man after God's own heart that it is beautiful for God to do these things when it's early for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let the TV not come when you're too blind to see at 90. 
What is the use for a car when you're 79? And then you say, either way, God promised and he fulfilled. That's why I don't like certain f- phrases like delay is not denial. I know. But I also don't want to be delayed. Oh, this microwave generation, they want things quicker. I have one life. If you have to die and come back and do your own business. Me, I died already and resurrected. I have one more. Are you hearing me? And I am ready and made up to live this life as the Bible has said it to the fullest of what the word of God has said upon my life. I don't leave anything undone. I'll not leave any page unturned. I'll do it all to the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, then I ask you the question. Is God relating with you according to the understanding you ought to have and speaking to you as he ought? Or is he speaking to you according to your level? Of understanding. Such Christians don't have lots and parts in the gospel. No, they are just experiments. They are just hypotheses. Leave that place. Leave that place. Come up yonder. Are you hearing me? Come up yonder. Write your story too. Praise God. Do your thing. Do your thing. Are you hearing me? Shine in your docket. But refuse to be an ordinary person. Now, in Hebrews, it's talking about people who are dull with hearing. And because of that, for when the time they ought to be teachers, they need that one teacher again, the first principles of the oracles. And he says, and you become as such that need milk and not strong meat. And he says, for everyone that uses milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a word. Babe, the Amplified says unable to speak. That means in the spirit realm, you don't have a language. You could have a voice, but you don't have a language. That means your thought does not register effect in the spirit realm. There are people who think and speak, but you don't have effect. I fire nothing. Water instead comes. The day, the day you bring a person who is dying to them, they lay hands on the person, the person died immediately. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? But the Bible says, but strong meat belongs to them that are mature. The Bible says, full of what? Age. Who, those who by reason of use have what? Their senses what? Gymnasium. Gymnasio. Hallelujah. Gymnasio. They've, gym, they've, they've They've exercised their senses, praise God, to design both good and evil. They have exercised themselves. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 verses 10, it says, For they verily, for a few days, just in us. The Bible says, after their own pleasure, he was talking about our parents, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. And the Bible says, and for now, not chastising for the present seemeth to be joyous. Seemeth. Seemeth. You know when he says then seem to be? He's saying it means it can only be joyous from the perspective you see. Again here, we are talking about the mature person and the babe. When we were young, one time I remember, me and my brother, we went to daddy and said, daddy, we want money. I don't remember what we wanted it for. And my father said, Wait, I don't have money. Ah, yeah, yeah, we cut a wire. Then we remembered, but this guy comes back with money. How can he say he doesn't have what? Money. When we know even where the money is kept. <laughs> Listen. When we were little, we did not understand that that was capital for investment to make money to get us fees. So at that particular point, we felt like we were what? being denied, yet the same money was capital to do business to take us to school. The same it is with certain Christians. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Many of them cannot cipher. Their minds cannot 
understand what is permissible and beneficial. What is precious and what is vile. When they see the liberties of the spirit that grant all things permissible to them and give them access, many don't carry the wisdom to know what they should be brought under the power of and what they shouldn't be brought under the power of. These things, by the way, are very far from many Christians. The things I'm speaking right now. And probably even somebody listening to me saying, what is he saying? Don't worry, your spirit understands. Tell your neighbor, my spirit understands. Now, what my father was doing to us is he was disciplining us. He was chastising us. He said that when we grow up also, we carry the wisdom to know what to keep and what to give. And how to give. Do you understand what I just said? That was a chastisement. But it wasn't joyous for us because we felt he was denying us. Yet there were moments he would give us money freely. Go do this. Oh, he gives you. So what were those moments when he would deny us and the moments he would give us? It is now in my maturity as I grow up to know the difference of what this man was up to. Now I understand that he would get of his profits and give us. But sometimes maybe the profits were not there. And so he would not have much to give. But the opportunity of the Jews of the next day to work enough to make the profit to give us probably another time. But if that time it was not given, then maybe now if, if, if it was mature now, I would tell him, Dad, I understand. Understanding. Did you understand? Now the Bible says not chastisement is joyous. Simmeth joyous. Right? That is why when a man matures in the things of the spirit, you can get in the middle of the storm and start laughing. In the middle of the storm. They throw you in prison like Paul and you say, I count it all but joy, brethren. When diverse them, I count it all. James says, count it. You see, you get to a point where you can count it all when you fall in diverse temptations. Paul is in prison cells in Colossae. He's saying, I'm joying with you. I'm joying. I'm in joy. The man is behind bars, but he knows what God is up to. Then you find another person says, you know, this has happened. I'm living salvation. I'm not even born again. I'm not even, you understand? He's not my father anymore. He has refused to give me money. He doesn't love me. What? He pays your fees. He takes you to hospital. He buys you clothes and shoes. And puts water on your table and bread to eat. And you've cut a wire because he has refused to give you money. Which is capital to extend your blessing. Did you understand what I just said? Now he says no chastisement seems joyous. It doesn't seem joyous to be joyous. But to the mature. You can go through a chastisement of the Lord and you're happy. That's why some of you go through things and they say, but why, why is she smiling with the problems she has? Why is that guy happy? Because when they look at you, there is no reason that explains your joy, but you are happy. You're mature. You know the father is he, he's up to something. <laughs> All things are working together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So you don't even throw back. You don't draw back. You know who you are. You know what you're made of and you know the end of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know the end of the Lord that is very pitiful and tender of mercy. He will not let his righteous see corruption neither his soul rot in hell. Now he says but this, this chastisement, the disciplining of the Lord. The Bible says it afterward yieldeth the yieldeth, sorry, the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto, unto them which are exercised thereby. That means even in the process, in the waiting process, when you're going through the hardest time, there's a way you must learn how to exercise yourself. And it says to those that have exercised themselves, it gives a peaceable fruit. The results of it come through. That means that people who when they go through trouble, they are not exercised enough to withstand certain burdens. Now he tells you, exercise yourself to godliness. What is he trying to tell you? Live where God is. Exercise yourself to live where God is. 
to think where God thinks from, to relate where God relates from, to purpose where God purposes from, to believe where God believes from, to understand where God understands from. And he means to say exercise. Can I give you an example? Can I give you an example? You wake up in the morning and you have a pain in your stomach and it's so bad. Are you hearing me? This is pain in your way. In your stomach. Of course, the primary equipment is the word. Tell your neighbor it's the word of God. Yes. Fasting is another. You learn to fast. The New Testament dispensation does not teach us to fast to move God. God has already moved. The New Testament dispensation of fasting moves us to get to where God is. To get to his page. So don't think, I fasted and God healed me. No, you fasted and got yourself to the level of faith enough to relate to God's language. And so he healed you. So he didn't heal you because you fasted. And not everybody needs to fast to get to that level. Because again, it's the weights. The things a heavyweight man fasts for are not the things a featherweight woman fasts for. The things a featherweight man fasts for are not the things a heavyweight woman fasts for. So we are all fasting, but we sit differently. Prayer is an exercise. He says speaking, praying in your most holy faith, which is speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. But you see, I always tell Christians, as you grow, you realize that prayer, the spirit of prayer is not complete when a man does not understand how to watch. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 18. Praise God. He says, praying always with all what? All prayer and supplication in the what? In the spirit. And what? Watching. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 5. When Paul is preaching about the testimony of the gospel, he speaks of how they were in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in what? Watchings and in fastings. A man who prays but cannot watch is like a man who drives a car when he doesn't know where he's going. Hallelujah. The watchings is the revelation of the end of the Lord in the matter. Phronesis. Hallelujah. The wisdom of God that determines the mode of action to the end in sight. Because it understands that this end is not only to the dictates of what only God has said, but it also gives this man the responsibility to reconcile his liberties in God with the issue. Because see, all of us have access by this liberty. But not everybody functions in the same liberty. We're all free to walk in divine health. But not everybody is healthy. We're all free to be rich. But not everybody is rich. We've been given all things freely. The Bible says it gives us all things freely to enjoy. But not everybody can testify the reality of that testimony. Did you get it? The watchings help you. You know how to declare the way of the spirit you can tell a sign before anybody understands it you know the way of the spirit when God comes in a building you recognize that he's coming through the fourth window before anybody else sees it such people are always in tune with divine purpose before others and before you know that you will always be ahead of your peers always always you'll never be at the same speed with your peers because that's the quickening of the spirit. Watch us stand on doors and windows of the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Although <laughs> doors close quicker than windows. <laughs> okay. Now, you have a pain in your stomach. It's too much. It's so hard you can't even bend. The way you respond to that pain proves whether you are exercised or not. Are you hearing me? When that pain comes, what does the word of God say? He says, none in Zion shall say, I am sick. Are you hearing me? So you start exercising yourself to refuse to say. Ah, 
you start exercising yourself to refuse to say that you are what? Sick. And then the Bible says that for he that knew no sin became sin. That we being dead unto sins might live unto righteousness. And the Bible says, and by his stripes you were healed in 2 Peter 2, 24, right? Now, if he says, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, exercise yourself. Praise God. He says, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Right? That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And he says, by his stripes, does he say you will be healed? So is it the act that is going to heal you? No. It's the act that is going to confirm your affirmed healing. So the man who is exercised in the way of the spirit, you stand up and say, I cannot fall sick. I don't fall sick. Are you hearing me? They cannot be pain. This is a lie. Devil, this is not so. You're lying. I was healed long ago. That's a man exercising. <laughs> Praise God. In the spirit realm, do you know what you're doing? You're, you're boasting your health gym. Because you know the Bible says, of which... The devil lies in wait to deceive. Satan is always waiting. When he departed from Jesus in the wilderness, he says, and then he departed from him for a what? For a season, for a moment. That means he was going to come back anyway. That means where, at the moment you say you're living in this body, 24 hours a day, the devil is like this. He's waiting. He's waiting for any opportunity to hit you. Are you hearing me? But when you do the gym, he gets to a level where he's like, no, this one, even if you attack him in the back, even if you strangle him, he has enough power to get your hands off his neck. This one, you just need to blow. Boop. This one, you just need to back. Roar. When I was in high school, a friend of mine called Simon disturbed me. And so I got angry. And then I started chasing him. He was a big, big guy like this. I don't even know why I was chasing him. I think I was just angry. So I chased him. In anger. Are you hearing me? In anger. And the more he ran, the more angry I became. I don't know what I was going to do to this big guy who is like almost twice my size. At, at that point, my brain wasn't thinking anything. So I said, let me just chase him. I don't even know why I was chasing him. But I just put myself to chase so I chased this guy and when I chase him he runs, 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 runs and as he sees like he has left me like I'm here he's, he's right there on that speaker he just sounds like this then he comes back for me I just found myself turning <laughs> then as I'm running I start asking myself by the little why are you running? you're the one who was wronged why are you running? but I guess it was the fear of it dislodged my thought, my pattern of thought, because remember, I was the one chasing. Since when did he turn? What have I done? Do you want to know how the story ends? No, go away. So, <laughs> pray for me. So, some people. He just needs to run a little like this. And then time when they're coming back and then he turns. And then they run away. The Bible says they lose their sweet words. The somebody says, I can't be sick. <coughs> I'm sick. <laughs> oh, you're, you're a featherweight. You're a featherweight. Are you hearing me? When you exercise yourself, you stick to what you know that the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. There was a level I got to whether it didn't matter how much I had, you, did, you could not convince me I was broke. I was exercised. Somebody said hallelujah. I was exercised to a level whether nobody would convince, you can't convince me. That I'm an average, even if you do what? There is no way. Because I have convinced, I have exercised myself. Are you hearing me? That is why in your line of prayer, instead of acting, are you hearing me? Glorify God with thanksgiving. Some people are God, help me. If you come through, I will serve you. Do this. No, 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 no. Some of us, when we, when we start praying, 
when we start praying arakatalabaye oh my goodness we are like in a gym you, even after one hour you start sweating father i thank you because i'm fearfully and wonderfully made i thank you because everything is working for my good i cannot fail i know who i am i know what is in me i know what is working in my body my body is the embodiment of the holy spirit and all things are of god my heart is of god my kidneys are of god my liver is of god how can it be sick oh Tell your neighbor, exercise yourself. What if you wake up and feel pain? It doesn't change your confession. <sighs> Who told you I'm broke? Who told you I'm weak? Who told you they have failed? Because you've seen this, you think that because this has failed, oh no, no. You don't understand what I'm saying. Some of us have too much spiritual muscle. That we can't be shaken. This thing steadies your spirit. It gives stability to your destiny. It gives you the comfort that God who began this work in me, he will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. It conditions your spirit. You learn to rule your spirit. You don't get intimidated by circumstances. Things just don't throw you off. No. Even if you're sad, you're only sad for a moment. And then something comes up in your spirit and say, but ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, no. Building yourself up in your most holy faith. If you don't understand what to say, just speak in tongues. Before you know it, what was sad what was like a big deal? Ah, do I have a witness? Have you ever woken up and you don't know what to do? And then you just find yourself rapakata. Zikarababa. Zibrakapakatelepa. Zikapakaprakalata. Zorobobobobo. And then as you're praying, you start feeling like hope is rising. Strength is rising. Are you hearing me? Understanding is rising. Interpretation is rising. Oh, rekatalaba. Zakababara. Rabatolobolobo. Zirabakatalapa yeke. I can, but no, it won't defeat me. I am more than a conqueror. I Didn't you say I'm more than a conqueror? Did you not say that I'm more than a conqueror. I, you cannot be a liar. Hey, Rabakata. But you don't understand it, Apostle. The, the doctor said, You also don't understand it. God said, Somebody shout hallelujah. Many of us receive Rema, but it does not carry the window for us to access what is received as Rema. Because Logos is frustrated. Why is it frustrated? Because we are not chastised in the Logos. We are not disciplined in the word of God. We, we don't take him for his own word. He said, exercise yourself to godliness. Think like God. Act like God. Believe like God. God, what if they tell God you have HIV? What does God do? Ah, just give me one impression when they say, Jehovah God, you have HIV. Why are you laughing? Because that's how God is. Are you hearing me? Slap yourself. That's how God is. Praise God. You look at the doctor and laugh at them. <laughs> Maybe you don't feel the laughter yet. Yes, fake it. Ha, ha, ha. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The Bible says if you're serious about living this resurrected life, do what? Act like it. Read it. Colossians verses 3, chapter 3, verses 1. He says, so if you're what? No, you're not playing. If you're what? Message version. Serious about living this new what? Resurrection life with Christ. Do what? Do what? Do what? Why do you still walk like a poor woman? Why do you look like you've been dumped? Why do you dress like you're not loved? Why do you speak like you're rejected? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Shereke brakatala pata. Shereke rekata ramanda rekos. Even if you don't have a penny in your pocket, walk like a rich man. Oh, sakaraba zekete. Just, just walk it. Just walk it. Rende kereke brakata. Why? Because you're a son of the most high God. Exercise. And as you do it, you're growing the muscle. You're growing the muscle. You're growing the muscle. If you believe you're rich, you're growing the muscle of wealth. If you believe that you're healthy, you're growing the muscle of divine health. Listen, some of us have been sick to death. Sick to death. I prayed to God and I thought he's going to come and pity me. He came and looked at me straight in the eye. I remember in the spirit. And he said, you know too much to die. And he disappeared. Of like, don't bore me. You've read the Bible already. Oh, I got disease and I got the Bible. And I told disease, come here. Are you hearing me? You think I don't know the word? The Bible says, you, you, you listen, listen. I started quoting every healthy scripture that you know in the whole world. I told the devil, I have the life which is of God in me. I have the life which is of God in me. I have the life which is of God in me. I have the life which is of God in me. I have the life which is of God in me. I have the life which is of God in me. I said, I have the life which is of God in me. If the same spirit that raised him from the dead resides in my body, I say, I'll give life to my mortal body. For if I live by the flesh, I shall surely die. But if by the spirit, I'll mortify the transactions of the devil, I will live. I choose to live in the spirit. I'm healthy. That settles it. And I'm not going to go to any machine to prove it. I don't need a machine to tell me what God says. That's unbelief. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? That is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. You exercise yourself. Oh, there were many years we used to preach and the chairs in the back were empty. Don't be mistaken. But that didn't tell us that they were our limitation. No, because we knew what the word of God says. They are empty. You wake up in the morning. You thank God and say, God, thank you. Because Fanero was full today. Slap somebody and tell them you've not seen nothing yet. Until we got to times where I would put chairs and half muscles were enough spiritually to fill them. Some of you don't need a breakthrough. You don't need a prophet. You don't need an apostolic hand. You don't need an evangelistic proclamation. You just need to go and build a gym in your house and start working out. Come on, open your mouth. Come on. Come on. Come on. Build your marriage. Build your ministry. Build your life. Walk. Come on. Fix it. 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 Fix your finances. Fix it. Fix your marriage. Fix it. Fix your children. Fix it. 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 Do your gym. Come on. You can't fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You can't fail. It's too late to fail. Rebakata la pata. Zara baba baba kata. Those who thought 
thought it was your end. They are about to discover that you are not begun yet. Man of God, you're beginning. Woman of God, you're beginning. Come on. Exercise your blessing. Exercise your vision. Say, I see in the spirit. I'm not dull of hearing. My heart indicts good matters. My steps are ordered of the Lord. My vision is precise. My experience are the, my experiences are distinctive. The glory of God upon my life cannot be measured. The anointing is unlimited. Generations are hearing me. Generations are hearing me. Doors are opening every time. Windows are opening every time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Rabatalabaye. Exercise. Speak the craziest statement. Don't worry. Don't worry. Speak. Robo Sakatalapa. You will live and not die. 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 Araba katalapa ye, breze reba kasha katalapa, zere kere reba zandolobos, zere braza laba katalapa, zere remando robo zalaba. One of you just hold that lady's hand and speak in tongues. Zere kebra katalapa, zere rere remando robo bobos, zere re kebro kota remando robos. Sere brakata, sere kebatalapa. Yes, yes. Sire mano robo saba katelepo. Rosolo brakasa katelebre. Zande kere brakata la pa yeleba. Sere kaba baba baka yala. Sara baba bara bakata. Samando robo robo bosele. Brakata la pa yeleba. Zikaraba, I belong there. I belong in the stars. I belong above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm moving upward and upward only. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. My vines bring forth even before their own timing. And they are ripe and ready. They don't cast off before their time. I produce fruit everywhere I go. In every situation and circumstance. I never fail. I don't fail. I can't fail. Speak on your future. Speak on the nations that must hear you. shall come to your rising gentiles shall come to your light strangers will serve you God will esteem you above your people speak it speak it speak your future now I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise because I've said clap but because you believe clap your hands 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 because you believe clap because you believe thank you Holy Spirit listen Exercise yourself. That is why I tell people every serious Christian 
should at least dedicate not less than an hour in the presence of God. Every day of your life. They say it's a thousand hours, ten thousand hours give you mastery. You can't pray a certain way and not have results a certain way. Praying always, always in the Holy Ghost. God wants to raise a generation that can pray. You sit in your car and the moment you start the engine rakata kapaka takapaka me I bathe when I'm rabala balaka sakaraba I walk when I'm roko botolo boko robo bobo sakatalapa why we are building ourselves in the most holy faith so get a new song and a new adage when you're going to pray you just tell your friends I'm going to my spiritual gym give me two hours I'll call you I'm in the gym. Listen, if you're sick, receive your healing. Just receive. Don't pray. Receive. 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 I see God open some doors. For certain people here and you're going to enter places in a few weeks that don't look like you Holy Spirit confirm that word confirm that word some of you, you're just seconds away. This is your second. Now, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. And the things you've believed God for for years, some of you are walking off this ground with those things. They said in your family, this never happens, that never happens. Some of you, you're walking away with something. Strong men are taken away by stronger men. And I see the love exchange taking place. The eyes of my spirit are open. I can see. Things are exchanging for you. Some people are losing for your gain. Some people are leaving for your entering. Of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you because it is done. It is done. It is done. Now, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, you don't have a gym. You can't even make one. <laughs> I want to give you an opportunity to come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's the one that died for you, shed his blood for you gave himself for you. I charge you by God that if you're there and you feel that today God is speaking to your heart to receive him as your Lord and Savior. You're going to repeat these words after me. Say Lord Jesus I've heard your word. I've heard your story. The Bible says with the heart a man believes and confession is made to salvation tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior I'm born again Amen The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International For more information contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.